learn from that strength class, and it's been very, very helpful to our chapter. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so lastly, we have um, some future goals in order that we're hoping to implement either um, that we start this semester or we look to implement in the future. Um, the first is like a greater involvement with the leadership institutions. Um, for example, um, we would like to send like more people to UIFI. Um, we sent one last year, but we would like to have like a greater presence there. <coughs> um, same with um, convention and um, the you know, like Keystone is sort of set how many people we can take. But just like we would like to have like an, um, a greater um, impact like on those institutes and learn like much more. Um, another goal is to increase our chapter campus involvement. So a way we've started to think about being able to do this is to have uh, more younger members come in and serve, as, uh, serve positions um, right when they join Beta, and that gives them le leadership experience that then they can use um, through the rest of their college career to have leadership positions in other organizations outside, um, you know, like previous ones we've mentioned. So that was uh, that was a way we were thinking about achieving that. Yeah, and another way we we're trying to enhance the role of leadership development chair and use that as a way to enhance leadership through um, programming with members of campus who can speak about leadership and also informing members about what leadership opportunities are on chapter and trying to develop a culture of leadership and enhance our culture of leadership. Um, we're also trying to develop a program for member education. Um, <clears throat> we've sort of had one in the past, and we're just trying to like get the um, details of it down. Um, last semester, like we had like a couple sessions, um, but they weren't um, widely attended. They were more in um, sort of um, not random, but like various different uh, categories. Um, for example, I think we had one on like what it means to be like a man, um, and like how like gender roles are like defined, and like how that impacts. Um, our chapter and um, things like that. But um, we'd like to sort of extend it, um, and one main focus would be on the newly initiated brothers, just so <clears throat> instead of like going through budget, learning about our history, and then not really talk about it again. So um, we would just like to go through um, like that history more and um, focus like a lot more on like the uh, information like learned during our initiation because like once again, it was sort of like talked about during initiation, and then we don't really mention it again until like the next initiation. So just trying to incorporate like a ritual like more fully like into um, our culture as well, in addition to like keeping those uh, different seminars on the different topics. And then uh, finally, we're looking into a possible reorganization of our chapter structure to the VP system. So this has been the, the new system that our general fraternity has been recommending for the startup of new chapters and colonies. Um, and we just have, you know, just barely started examining this new system and the potential benefits it could uh, could have on us. But we actually had a discussion in exec about it last night, um, and uh, so we're we're looking into that system and how it might be able to provide greater accountability um, in the different roles and different positions. So, yeah, um, that's it. Any questions? Oh, and I I always forget. Sorry, every time. I do a presentation, I always forget. My name is Martin, by the way. <laughs> Lucas. I'm Jacob. I always forget that. Just dive right in. Um, I do have a question. So, uh, I, on one hand, I totally understand wanting new members that are newly initiated to join, immediately join your executive board. I love the idea of having, you know, that continuity of leadership, potential ability to go to IFC, you know, like really make some change. But how do you address or what skills are you teaching your new members through the new member process that are giving them either the historical background that they may need to be able to be an effective leader within beta and or the skills to, as a sophomore, serve on an executive board with a chapter that's full of juniors and seniors who have been members for two, three years. Right, well, um, one of the things that we, we definitely touched on, which uh, I think is an important aspect of it, was the strengths quest. Mm -hmm. So by having all the pledges go through that and then having that follow-up session with uh, Crystal and Taylor, um, we really talked about not only you know what does all, all this stuff mean, but how does it apply to you and how can you best utilize these strengths? Like for example, um, as a past vice president, 
I spoke with one of the members who actually became the current vice president, and we looked at his roles and saw, hey, a lot of these are a lot of his strengths, and said, hey, a lot of these are really well suited to a lot of the roles that you have to fulfill as a vice president. And then with the increased um, uh, transparency that we're going for of like transitions and things like that, one of the um, goals and accomplishments of our past uh, leadership development chair was to put on a presentation before elections so that all of the, the new members and would know exactly what is entailed in all the positions and you know kind of what they're getting into beyond just talking to the, the past holders of those positions. Um, and then you know finally there's always a, a balance of you know experience versus you know desire to jump in and get involved. And you know, I think it's it's still important to have a balance of you know some older members, some experienced mm -hmm. members on exec, but as well as getting some yeah. fresh ideas, fresh faces. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, we also have um, during like the pledge ed sessions, uh, there are people um, who come in. I think like the first chapter or the first uh, pledge ed is always the president, just saying like his role, what he does, um, <clears throat> gives sort of like a holistic like view of the chapter. And um, a lot of other positions come in to present, just so um, each person gets a better idea of like what the chapter is, how it functions, um, things like that. Yeah. So it like can help them um, prepare them as leaders as well. Thank you. So what what um, did you implement this year that wasn't recommended by the university, or that or involved the university module, or that wasn't recommended by nationals and involved, or involved a, unit, a nationals module. So that knocks out strength quest, that knocks out the institutes. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you folks did that wasn't given by uh, somebody that has authority over you. I think a main um, push was uh, with the bylaws, um, because it was becoming more and more of an issue that like we have the bylaws, but we didn't really refer to them. There are like a lot of things where we look through, and it's like, oh, I didn't know that was in there. Like, we don't really do that anymore. Um, so it was sort of like a big push to um, sort of revamp that. Same with um, our a brotherhood committee manual. Um, it was sort of the same issues. Just so the harmonization and simplification of codes to make them more transparent and mm -hmm. intelligible. What What's the backstory to that? Was there a um, problem that gave rise to this? Or give us with the bylaws. Mm -hmm. How did it come um, about? It was more just like over time, um, like people. I'm not sure if they weren't like as um, cautious and like looking like over the bylaws. Um, it was also like more restricted. Not everybody had like a copy of the bylaws. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. Why did you turn your attention to it? I understand how it got that way, how it okay. became a kind of arbitrary mess, mm -hmm. but. Why did you decide to do this? Um, Tom, give me the story. I mean, tend to, usually when you give a presentation, you present your successes and your results, but that leaves out the motivation. And there's a tendency to, to try to appear perfect rather than explaining what you did in terms of addressing problems. Right. But if we turn inside out what you said, it sounds like there were some problems. Tell me how those surfaced and how you addressed them. Um, a main sort of uh, stimulus was there was a brother who um, really wanted to be a big, um, so just like a mentor for uh -huh. um, one of yeah. um, the new members. And <clears throat> um, currently, like he wasn't in good standing, mm -hmm. um, but exactly like made the decision. Like they talked about it, they got um, the brotherhood committees mm -hmm. or the judicial boards like perspective, um, and they decided that like it would be worth like giving him. Um, that opportunity, especially mm -hmm. since he was on co-op and it was he wasn't in good standing due to grades. Um, but there were a lot of um, mainly like the seniors that there was like a backlash saying like you didn't really have the right to do this like that's more of like a chapter decision you know mm -hmm. and like exec doesn't have that power. So um, that exec like really um, that was in last spring. Wow. So they um, there was like a big push. Right after that, and in the fall, to make sure that we adhere very closely to the bylaws, and if the bylaws don't match our current practices, that we need to update them, either um, like change them so that they do match the current practices, or start a new system altogether and like evaluate like what we were doing and what the old system was doing. Can I ask one more follow-up? Yeah, definitely. So this is really interesting. So basically, you're saying that there was a perception by the um, 
those who, who have more experience, so call them leaders by experience, that um, those who were political leaders were not needed to be chastened. I mean, I mean, it's a funny word, but it sounds like that was the experience. And then the political leaders listened to the leaders by experience, but in the process realized that those who had come before had made, had not really simplified and harmonized things. Right. So there was a kind of back and forth, is that right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I imagine that involved a fair amount of tension at times in the chapter. It could be a very complicated situation to have your senior members coming down on the executive board. How did, I mean, how did, how did it all resolve at the interpersonal level? I mean, I think for the most part, like, having been on that exec, I, I definitely had a lot of the interactions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was always fairly civil. Um, not only did, you know, they come talk to the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, they, uh, luckily we have, I guess, systems set up for people to air their grievances. That's one of the things that the Brotherhood Committee does. Movement, right? Yeah, so people just... Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People just uh, would come to the committee and say, "Hey, I, I have an issue. I want to talk about this." And it was our job as the Brotherhood Committee to to be a liaison between them and exec and, and things like that. Um, and in addition, speaking on kind of motivations for change that you were mentioning on earlier, um, a lot of the reasons that the uh, the Brotherhood Committee changes came about with the. Uh, the election versus appointing, as well as the manual update, uh -huh. um, came about from uh, a situation where we had a, a pledge that was under a, uh, a university investigation, and so there were some, uh, there was a lot of confusion as to, you know, what actions we could take, um, as well as, you know, what actions the university would take, exact yeah. things like yeah, that. Yeah, really confusing. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, we were going through our, our manual to try and mm -hmm. clarify things, and we realized, hey, a lot of this stuff is very out of date. Um, and in order to you know set the next committee up on a, a good foot forward, we need to make sure we go through and uh, edit this and make sure it's all up to date for the next uh, next committee that comes in. Thank you. That was a good answer. Um, okay, so my question is kind of related to what you were just talking about. Yeah. So you went through and you realized that there were issues with how certain processes were done mm -hmm. and the bylaws were out of date and exact went through and made all of these changes. How has your chapter reacted to those changes? Um, and how do they like feel about it? Yeah. So for bylaw changes, um, how they work is that um, all that exec can really do is sit down and come up with ideas of like, okay, like here's how we think this bylaw like should be changed. Um, but it needs to be presented at the chapter and in order to make a change we need a two thirds majority of like the chapter or of voting members. But um, so I think that it has been um, favorable uh, mainly because <clears throat> um, we bring up it's like, hey, like this isn't like part of our bylaws or we're going against our bylaws. And sometimes they like grumble because they don't want to have like a long discussion. But um, like all in all, it I think has been, it's worked out very well because they are changes that um, the chapter as a whole has been putting in place. And speaking as a younger member in the chapter and just seeing this from the outside looking in, becoming a new uh, chapter and seeing this is a new bylaw being proposed that exact feels very strongly about, I felt very comfortable with it seeing as there's long chapter discussions that really hash through uh, possible issues with the bylaws, whether this is actually feasible and actually had, I feel like, Everyone who comes to chapter has a very strong voice, and everyone's equal. So I feel that's a very good culture. And I'm assuming these were fairly recently implemented. Have you had a chance to see them in action, whether they've actually helped the chapter? Yeah. Um, I guess, for example, the, uh, the bylaw with how um, the Brotherhood Committee is, is, uh, is now elected. We actually just recently went through that election process, and... Uh, you know, saw the process in action. Um, we, the executive committee, uh, slated a, a brotherhood committee, and then there was some chapter discussion on it. People were glad that we were actually they were getting to see who their judicial body was going to be before it was in place, um, and getting to talk about it and then appoint it, um, or then approve it. Um, and then uh, we've already seen usage of the uh, the formal appeals process. We've had brothers um, uh, come to the whole chapter with an issue they had. Um, and then we've been able to have a, a chapter-wide discussion um, of how we want to resolve that issue, what we think is best for them, 
and uh, you know we've had a, I think we've had a lot of success with uh, with those. Because I know, like in the past as well, there's always <coughs> been a concern that the judicial board, like that it's very opaque, like um, people don't know what's going on in it. But um, like especially like recently, um, I haven't heard like any complaints about that. So I think that we are like increasing. I have one more question. Um, so I love the the UIFIs, the leadership conferences that people attend. Um, but my question is, how are you creating a space for those individuals to come back and really create change if they don't have a title or if they don't have um, a role either in a student organization or within Beta themselves? Like, where? How? What is the environment around those experiences? Um, I know personally, um, I went to convention not last year, but the year before, um, and I, um, that's when they sort of brought out Pursuit, um, and like we're um, sort of like starting to push it. Um, so when uh, we came back to campus, like <clears throat> I had a seminar about it, just like how it works, like how to log in, um, things like that. So um, I think I was technically like scholarship chair at the time, but like it was sort of outside like the duties of the scholarship chair. So it is sort of, um, we have that culture for people to sort of step up and take charge. So like if they have an experience in like, um, that they feel very passionate about that they want to like share with the chapter, um, we encourage them to do so. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these, uh, a lot of those conferences are like kind of designed for people with leadership roles already. However, one of the major ones that, that is for anybody is the Wooden Institute. And um, we've had a lot of brothers who have been in positions, not positions, attend that. And then they've come back and talked about their experiences, um, came to exec and spoke on, you know, hey, these are the things we talked about. Here are the problems that I think we've identified and like to work with you to, to help solve over the next year or semester or so. Um, so usually it's not a, I guess, kind of chapter-wide discussion, but I, I think they, they bring what they've learned, like, to the, the relevant bodies or committees. Um, I guess that would be something like to improve on a bit is how they uh, how they are able inter in to interact with the chapter as a whole. Awesome. And also I feel like the individuals, one comes to mind specific, uh, that go to Wooden who don't have currently hold positions, they bring a huge amount of energy and excitement that comes from these um, leadership opportunities as being as someone who just came back from Keystone, I have a huge amount of energy and drive to change what I want. And even if I didn't have a position, um, they, they actually go to in, uh, members who hold position and talk to brothers and really try to push that, that new energy and drive. Yeah, they, they also encourage like other members to attend these institutes as well. So mm -hmm. they might not bring something back from their individual like session, but they do encourage other people to bring um, information back as well. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Just a, just a formal question, I should know this answer. So you, I'm assuming you've all had these pillars in front of you thinking about as you made this presentation and designed your work, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, good. I just wanted to check the whole chat. Thank you. Thank you very much.